once I feel like we have that team and you know it, you there's some there's a certain feeling in the air when you have that those sort of guys around you and you can just feel that there's something special about to happen in that season. Welcome everyone to the official Nets GC retainment announcement video. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to Nets GC on YouTube and following us on all social platforms or the platform of your choice at Nets Gaming Crew. If this is your first time diving into the world of the NBA 2K League, because let's say you saw the agreement with the NBA Players Association or maybe you heard the news about the FIBA competition later this year, welcome. It's officially the beginning of a really exciting offseason here in Brooklyn. So let me introduce you to the crew. I'm joined by Nets GC's general manager and coach of the year nominee, OG King Kurt. And of course, if you haven't seen the graphic we've put out already for our roster announcement, <coughs> returning for the 2024 season is none other than RPG, rookie of the year, MVP candidate, Brooklyn Zone, one of the most underrated players. Uh, not really underrated. I don't know why I said that. Honestly, one of the best players in the league, Greens. Uh, returning with him or alongside him, the duo of Steez and Streets. You talk about underrated Streets, one of the most underrated locks in the entire league, despite being amongst the league leaders in steals. Of course, Steez, one of the most versatile bigs in the entire league, able to play four and the five at an elite level. And then, of course, the newest addition to the crew, former Rookie of the Year, do-it-all type of guard, trading the Texas backdrop to the New York skyline, let's say, Reezy. This is your 2024 Nets GC roster. Kurt, I want to kick things off with you. Man, uh, talk to me about what led you to this core four. You know, What are you most excited about them or most excited to see in regards to them as a group, but also as individuals? No, I mean, luckily for me, I was blessed to – have the rookie of the you know rookie of the year MVP candidate and Greens being the number two overall pick this past season, uh, to be able to put him with Streets and Steez, uh, who I felt like have became a, a dynamic duo, especially on the defensive end, uh, even you know last season, but bringing that same energy back this season and being able to put them together uh, and go on the run that we went on, especially in three v three, and then that turned over to five v five. It's just been really a blessing. Uh, and then now going into the offseason, uh, to be able to get a, a player like Reed, who we don't need him to come in and be, you know, something super or anything like that. We just need him to be the, the same professional that he's been uh, throughout his career. Uh, he's definitely had some some highlight moments that we feel like we can rekindle here in Brooklyn. Uh, but then also, you know, just uh, coming off a season like last season, I think Brooklyn is the right place for him to be uh, to go into this upcoming season. And, you know, now it just lies in to see what we do with the, the last pick uh, that we have uh, to complete our roster for the 2024 season. Reed, I mean, you being the newest addition to the roster, I know this is quote unquote a retainment video, uh, but for our followers and, and Steve, feel free to jump in at any point as well, just because I, I, I want to talk about your unique stand or viewpoint from, how this all went down as well. But Reed, talk to us about what went through, you know, your head when you first heard that this might even be a possibility. Yeah, I mean, obviously I was like, I was super excited because um, my future in Dallas was kind of, you know, it was kind of like, didn't really know what was going to happen. And then once I kind of found out the the rumblings of me possibly getting traded, um, especially once I found out that Brooklyn was a possibility, I was just super excited because I felt like, uh, the core in Brooklyn was already really good, super talented. Obviously, um, me and Bird have known each other forever. Um, played with Greens and Streets for a while, got to know them pretty good. And then obviously, Kurt's somebody I've known and respected for a long time in this community. So I was just super excited to, uh, you know, potentially have the opportunity to play here. And I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm really, really glad that it came to fruition and, and now that I'm a part of the team. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll second some stuff and piggyback off a little, but uh, it's weird because being in this league for seven years, there's so many things you hear about all the time with like trade opportunities or possibilities. But for some reason, like something falls out usually right before it's about to happen or during the process of it. But uh, Reed and I have always like talked about potentially like linking up on teams. And that was potentially when I was in Philly. Um, and then obviously it, it happened here in Brooklyn, but 
usually things fall short, even when you have all these great ideas, it looks great on paper, but it just never ends up happening. And so to bring in a talent like Reezy, it's, it's truly special because um, even though last year with Mavs gaming, it, it didn't go well for them. Uh, we knew what kind of talent that, that Reed can bring here and having somebody like greens, who's a very special talent. I've always claimed, you know, he's probably going to go down as one of the best players of all time in this league. Uh, there's a certain type of shooting guard that you want to have next to him and someone that's not really going to get in his way, but also do their job when he needs to do their job and playing with greens for one season. I know that like, he's going to carry a lot of the, like the, the weight of our team on offense. Um, but in those moments where he needs you to step up, like you got to be able to do that for him. And that's where, when I was at center, I, I saw that a lot. Like I, I was always going to be aggressive for him because I knew if he struggled to get a bucket in a, a certain possession, I was going to help him. And so having somebody like Reed come to this team now, I feel like that's exactly what he can do. And as much as I'm excited for the on-court stuff with Reed, whether that's like getting a bucket, playing defense, um, just communicating with greens, uh, I'm really excited for a lot of the off-court intangibles that, that, that Reed's going to bring. Um, you know, that camaraderie, that, that team environment, and, you know, just being able to hang out with the guys. I feel like a lot of these teams that are very successful in this league, it, it doesn't just all happen on court. A big part of it is keeping a good, you know, brotherhood and relationship off court as well, being able to be around the team, the facility, all that um, good stuff. And so I just feel like he really brings all those intangibles that we need to kind of get over that hump right now. Uh, like we've been a very competitive team and, uh, this year we were playoffs in both modes, but I think if we want to take that next step and compete for a championship, we're going to need that right guy next to Greens, and I think we we finally found a, a piece for that. Sean Greens, I'm going to head to you next, but real quick, Steez, like what's what's one thing? I know you re read our boys. Like, what's one thing about Reed that you think Streets and Greens doesn't know yet about him? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, one thing that I think that that the guys probably don't know about Reed is, I mean, like the easy ones that like, he's actually pretty funny. Like I, I could laugh at Reed all day because like from a professional setting and what you guys have seen uh, from like league content from whether when Reed was in Orlando or with the Mavs or with 76ers, it's like Reed Reed's kind of like me in the sense of like when the, when the camera's on, he gets very professional, but when the camera's off and we're all kind of hanging around the facility, like Reed's a funny cat. He is, he, he, I don't know. It, it, we'll, we'll have to see. But I, I've already claimed, I haven't said this on any recording device or live streams or anything like that, but I already know when the time comes. Like, Sean, I already know how Sean feels, but I know Greens is going to be like, bro, like, I'm I'm really happy that we, we brought Reed here. Because, like, he's going to realize, like I said, not just the on-court stuff, but just, like, the vibe-wise and all the intangible stuff that Reed's going to bring to the team. Like, they're going to be excited. But, yeah, to answer your question – the dude's funny, even though he doesn't come off as funny, he comes off as like stoic sometimes and doesn't give you too much of his personality. Like he, he's a good kid. Uh, streets greens before we I'm ask you like back to back questions, but before we dive more into this specific group of four and what next season might look like, you guys were part of the process, just like with Steve and Kurt, um, but very closely involved with the process that we went through during the offseason to arrive where we are right now with this trade. What are some things that both of you learned um, about that process and how the offseason works? And Streets, I'll start with you just because this is your second time going through it. But Green, this, you know, you being a rookie last year, this was your first time experiencing it. Um, to me, the biggest difference was like compared to last year, after having like found out that we had two, it was kind of easy to see who he was going to get. So like this time around, we had to like actually like put our heads together and try to build a team. I feel like we all came to the, on the same page as far as getting read. And I don't know, I, I enjoyed it so far. And I'm low-key like looking forward to like figuring out who our fifth gonna be, whether that's in a draft or through a trade. So I'm just excited through everything. Greens, what about you? I, I know you had a very like unique experience, but it was, for, at least from my vantage point, it was very interesting to see how you handled like the ups and downs of that. And, and it, it's a part of the job that people on the outside looking in, they, they don't really get to see that or understand that until you're actually fully involved in it. Yeah, just to piggyback off Steve's, like I realized kind of like this being my first time, like you see – how all these trade scenarios is like is a thing and then it just never it just never falls through or it's just not realistic and things like that. So just 
learning to be real kind of with myself and knowing what's best for the team was something I learned uh, this offseason. Obviously, like, my mind, I always have my best interest in the team. But you kind of, like, really see, like, what you really need in a team and what you really want in a team in terms of, like, just off the court. And, like, I feel like we got that with Reed. I've been play I played with Reed in, like, 2K21, like, current gym. Uh, Pre-draft for a while, I was playing with Denial. So I was with Tox and Walnut and uh, – and read those guys. So I kind of already have an idea of like how Reed is as a person and how he is as a player. So like, I'm just excited to see who our fifth is going to be and get ready to work. Streets, what are you, what are you most excited about when it comes to playing with Reed? Uh, um, number one, I'm ready to beat him at ping pong because Steve said he's <laughs> he good. So I got to bust his ping pong first. That's not going to happen. No, he's terrible. Street as far as, as – I'm number I'm – number, no man, forget it. Um, yeah, don't make me like, unmute my mic. Right. I'm number two right now. Um, as far as like on the court, um, I don't know. I just could tell Reed really just funny. Like, like he said, I've been knowing him for a long time. So to be his team, man, I'm just looking forward to it. Like, like this my I ain't mean to like, but but I'm actually excited to like this like one of my first real teammates that I'm excited to have. Like coming into the team, that's not a knock at you, Greens, but you, you know. <laughs> I I will say, you guys are really making me have to go through this <laughs> and timestamp everything so I can edit out some of the cuss oh, words. But <laughs> no, we're good. I I, I want us to to be as normal and as close to our real selves as possible. Um, I, I want this to be a little bit different than your average kind of routine announcement video or, or episode or podcast. And so that actually wants me to, that I, I want to kind of bring it back to the whole process and Kurt, because you had the most unique vantage point of all, like just talk to me about what you saw from your guys and how they progressed through it because it, it was very i use the word process and i'm trying to think of a, a, a different word for it but it was it was very much a process so just talk about how you saw each and every one of these guys grow and they all collectively kind of work together to, to arrive to this core four yeah i mean when you look at the makeup of our team and you have a player like steve who's been in you know every year then you you get a a player like streets who in his going into his third season, but he's kind of seasoned when you talk about veteran as far as as a person, very mature for his age. Uh, and then you have a talent like Greens uh, who comes in his first year, has a phenomenal rookie season. And then now you're at the point where you're trying to put a team together. And of course, I think naturally Greens went through a situation where, uh, you know, being new to the process of your mindset is, is geared to, how you thought things or wanted things to be when you probably wasn't in the league. And I think through, you know, Steve's and Streets talking to him, me talking to him, uh, us all talking collectively, you know, that's how we got on the same page and trying to help him understand, like, you know, what we need far as a, from a team standpoint. You know, of course it takes talent to win in this league, but I don't think we've seen any team win a championship, whether it's a banner or anything like that if their team is not really – if there's not some type of cohesiveness. Like, they, that, I just believe that's a thing. Um, so, I think just watching them maturate throughout that whole process is, is part of why I love my job. I mean, because I get a chance to watch people grow uh, each and every season. Uh, so, for me, uh, I think it's just another step in showing that in Brooklyn – you know, we believe that anybody that puts on a uniform is going to be highly valued. And I kind of mentioned earlier about revitalizing Reed's career is because I think that's what we've done time in and time out. Um, you know, even going back from uh, when shots arrived and, and how his career went here. And uh, even I think Glenn last season, I think that was one of his best seasons in the 2K League. So um, I have no feeling any different. Uh, when, how we came to the decision to bring Reezy in. And, of course, um, you know, even talking about retainment is bittersweet moments in, in that. But uh, I see a bunch of growth uh, with us coming soon. And uh, and the talent is, is, is going to be there. Like, talent is all in how you cultivate it anyway. And, and like I said, I'm just proud of, of how we went through this offseason so far, uh, just having a collective decision on what we made and being comfortable with it at the end of the day. It's no secret to me that I use my players 
and I value their opinions. And I think arguably that might be one of the biggest things that separates me uh, amongst the other GMs in, in our league is that I, 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 I will always value my players' opinions and I could care less about what people on the outside of SGC think. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm a big fan of the, of the back and forth that you kind of foster and encourage within this Brooklyn environment. Um, and I think for any successful place that you, you, you kind of have to have that discourse, that back and forth conversation. Um, for the second half of this podcast episode, let's maybe take turns talking about what people can expect from this group moving forward. Let's look ahead, um, both as a group and then obviously, you know, also what your individual journeys may be for each of you uh greens let's kick it off with you you're, you're shedding the rookie tag right sophomore season chapter two what are you doing differently this year and how can this group help you with that um first things first obviously this year i want to keep up that same success that we had in uh 3v3 and like on paper like we did succeed i guess in 5v5 but i definitely think we could have did better uh obviously like, we made the playoffs but i definitely think with that team we had last year we should have been able to go farther um but just kind of keep that same success up. I want to have a better season than I did th uh, this year. I want to have that same season or even way better next year. Um, and I think with this team, it'll it'll be better. Uh, so, I'm like I said, I'm excited to see who we get as our fifth. And the biggest thing for me right now is just kind of just want, uh, being more assertive uh, with certain things and being more aggressive. And this is, like, more so, like, off the court. So just kind of being more assertive and telling telling people what I want, where people don't have to kind of like, what's the word like, um, like predict or what I want or don't know how uh, how I'm feeling or what I want to say. So that's something I'm definitely gonna change this year, a hundred percent, because I know how it how it is to win in this league at this point now. So if everybody's on their same like if if everybody's on like the same page in terms of that, like knowing what each other want, and like I feel like that's like the recipe for success. And I think with this team, I can kind of say how I feel without anybody taking it any 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 way or like getting checked out and things like that. Yeah, no no more mind reading. Uh <laughs> moving forward. Uh Reed, you're a former rookie of the year. Um I don't want to say down, but like statistically a tiny bit of a down year uh last season, of course within the context of what was going on in Dallas and, and the team, you know, struggling uh throughout the season. Are you taking on, like, are you taking on a personal goal to kind of remind everyone what you're capable of, or does that not really bother you too much? I mean, the outside opinion doesn't really bother me, but obviously, I do see like what people say, um, especially about the uh, about the trade recently. And obviously, I did have a down year last year in Dallas. Um, that was that was obviously the worst season of my career, but. Um, yeah, I do kind of want to remind people like the player I'm capable of and like what I'm capable of doing. Like just a season and a half ago, I was traded for an MVP, um, <laughs> 630. So it's like my value has completely changed. And now I'm now I'm here on the Nets and I just like I'm more motivated than ever. Um, I want to prove people wrong. Um, I want to try to make Kurt look good for making this move, <laughs> uh, make the team look good for making this move. So um, I'm more motivated than ever, really. And I'm just I'm just super excited to be part of this team, this group, like. I don't remember the last time I've been this excited about like coming together and just just playing with a certain group of guys. I feel like this team meshes together so well on paper, and we just got to make it work on the court. I love that. It's a, definitely a storyline to kind of keep an eye out on for the twenty twenty four season. Streets, you next. I saw you tweeted out. I think you might have tweeted out like year three, something along those lines, uh, not too long ago time flies man like year three for you. you 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 told me in the past or before that you you just want to keep improving every year you want the team to keep improving every year how does this team help you with that improvement and what do you want to see from this group the most next season um the thing i want to see the most out of the team i just want to see like a team that's i know i to be honest i know been on a team with everybody on the same page so i think that's like number one for me right at this point now and the way I feel like this team can help me, like, I mean, we just got a, another, like, a lot of, like, he a veteran, so I feel like he can bring something to the table that'll help me on offense and stuff like that. Like, it's different stuff coming from Greens. You know, this is second year now, but having somebody like Reed who made it fun tournaments, like, 
it's it's important for us to get on that same page and I feel like he's gonna help me and Green's growth the most. Um and then like the stuff I wanna get better at, like like this is my third year I'm with some vets, but I feel like I'm still like one of the biggest leaders on the team and I just wanna keep improving that on offense and defense and threes and fives on defense. So that's really it. Like it's a basic answer, but like at this point I just everything is broad, so no, I, it's not a basic answer. I, I, I like that out of you. It's uh, it's very it's very real, and I think we've all kind of gotten to the point now where well, it's not even really finding about the most talented five that we can put together, despite the talent on this team being, you know, immense. It's just really find, finding the most cohesive five person unit. Uh, lastly, yeah, let, me, hey, let me say this real quick, Chris. I mean, why kind of say you know, kind of like piggybacking of off what you just said is that part of the, the, the key to this is taking players and letting the, the good traits of each other rub off on each other. Because I say that because watching Streets come in his rookie year and some things that I wanted out of him, uh, him becoming tight with Steve, it, it kind of rubbed off because, you know, me bringing Steve in was to be a leader and to be a captain. Uh, but now – uh, streets was was definitely that uh, last season, and then like he mentioned, you know, bringing in Reezy, another veteran. I think all of this is 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 going to be a good combination, especially for Greens. I mean, because he's going to get a, a little bit of, of everybody, uh, and and I think um, for us, it's never been underrated about being a unit off the game. I've watched Steeds and Streets get tight. I watched Street Streets and, and Greens get tight. Um, and it's been a beautiful thing to watch. And then when I see them on the game together, uh, you can see that relationship flourishing. And I think a lot of people, you know, don't really get a chance to experience that. And I think that's something that I'm going to always value because if anybody really truly uh, cuts me open to the core, I, I value the relationships of each and every player that, that I have and that I've had. Uh, so just to watch them grow like that and, like I said, rub off on each other, I think that's going to be what type of team we are this year. And I'm sure the fifth player that we bring in will be the same one of, a, of the same type of character that's going to bring something to the table. I couldn't have uh, said it any better myself. Steez, you're last up here. This is year seven. You know, we talk about streets, year three. This is seventh season for you in the league, NBA 2K League. I'm guessing what, like all that really matters at this point is, is finding that championship. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that's, it's pretty elusive. It's hard to catch sometimes. It's tough. Uh, banners are good. Love them. Uh, but I'm, I'm as much as I want to win all those tournaments, I'm truly sick of that tip off banner. Uh, if we win it great, but I definitely want the ring at the end of the day. Uh, but mostly like when you hear Sean talk and you hear green stock and even Reed, it's like, um, uh, and this is no knock to any of my former teams either, but my favorite team that I ever had around me was my season two team because every day I showed up for practice or every day we were going on stage to play a game. I never worried about, I never questioned anybody, whether everybody, everybody's on the same page. We all knew what we wanted and we all cared for each other and we all played for each other. And it was something that I truly adored. And it's something I've truly sought after for ever since. Um, Sure, there have been great teammates here and there between the rest of the seasons, but I've wanted nothing more than since coming to Brooklyn than to be able to give Sean and give Greens that type of team around them. And because once I feel like we have that team and you know it, you there's some there's a certain feeling in the air when you have that those sort of guys around you and you can just feel that there's something special about to happen in that season. Uh, those are the ones that like you'll never forget. Those are the ones that will stick with you forever, and that's what you'll always want around you. So Streets has had some amazing years in this league so far, individually and as a team. And Greens, you know, his rookie year was damn near right there as one of the best in the world. Um, but we haven't hit that that gear where it's like we have the whole group around us where we know every single day, 24 hours a day, we're all on the same page and we know what the task is at hand. There's always a little hiccup. And I don't want that this season as best as we possibly can. And so – I'm excited for the season because we can have somebody like Streets and Greens and Reed who I don't want them to have to worry about or question the intent 
or anything of that nature, like of this team. I want to know that every day that when we show up, when Greens looks at me or he looks at Streets or he looks at Reed, he knows exactly what we're here for. And he knows that like this is a family at the end of the day and, and we're all bought in. Like that's that's the biggest thing. Like I've talked about, you know, you got to invest and like we're going to invest everything we can into into Nets GC and we'll let the chips fall where they may at the end of the year. If it's with a if it's with a banner and if, or if it's with a ring, great, love it. But if it's not, um, as long as I know that like we gave it everything we got every single day and we came in as a unit and we committed a hundred percent, I'll live with that because um, I think greens and streets definitely deserve a season where uh, we have the full five ready to go and we're all locked in at the same moment. That's truly what I want. As much as I want a championship, because I really do. Um, I want to give us our best shot to win. And I think our best shot to win and to be in that dance at the end of the year is you got to have the full five um, together mentally, physically. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's what I'm looking forward to most. Man, uh, Kurt, there's your, there's your captain. Uh, very excited to head into the 2024 season. Um, this is the, in my four seasons here with Brooklyn, this is the most I've ex been most excited I've been for a roster, and we still don't even have our fifth player yet. So uh, it, it should be a lot of fun. Let's wrap things up here, guys. Any last words or final thoughts uh, before we sign off from any of you? Uh, well, I want to say shout out to you, Chris, for uh, oh, being a being a dynamic assistant GM and assistant coach that you are. Like, I mean. Um, you just said four years, and I'm like, damn, like, I mean, I, I didn't even realize that. I mean, and that's exactly how much, you know, time flies. But um, I think Steve's, you know, I couldn't say it any better. I, I think just having uh, the opportunity to have five uh, players in the room that, that care about themselves, that care about each other, and that ultimately care about the SGC, um, I think that will be something that will help put us over the hump. Uh, we. We, we got a little taste of it last last season, and um, I, I can't see us going backwards. Uh, I definitely don't. I think, um, you know, barring anything, I'm always care about the people in the room. I can care less about people on the outside of the room. I, I, I don't think I'm as liked as I once was in the community because I don't indulge in a lot of different things. But uh, the one thing that I will say is that we're always going to be competitive no matter who soups up. Um, and, I, and I think as long as we uh, keep the edge that we have and, uh, and just buy into the unity uh, of the people in the room, I, I think we'll be in great shape. I, I honestly just can't wait to see, um, you know, how the league build is, how the players are uh, with the build and different things like that. And then I think the rest will write itself. 100%. Any, any other uh, last thoughts from anybody else in the room? No, no, that's I'm, it. I, yeah, I'm, I, I'm good I just go. say this season gonna be fun. Man. I'm gonna know you read all year. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think the uh, my last thought on the whole thing is, um, and, I, and I'm right there with Reed. I don't I don't really care what what anybody says about us regarding SEC Brooklyn. Nobody's been there the past two years with us, um, Kurt. For the past three, four seasons with you, you know what I mean, and like so. You don't really know unless you're sitting in those rooms with us throughout the years of what we dealt with. You know, the cliche is the blood, sweat and tears. Um, I've been in this league seven years. I know what it takes to win in this league. I've won a lot. I've made it to the big show. I've made it to the final stage, came up just a hair short. Um, and I definitely know what Brooklyn and what Nets GC, what we needed to do in this off season to prepare for this next upcoming season. So I'm truly every day now that, you know, we've made this trade, I wake up very excited um, for the future, but also like, like I kind of stated before, win, lose or draw with these guys right here that are in this podcast, including Kurt and including you, Chris, like, I'll go to war for this team and, and I'll die on that sword at the end of the day. And if that's what it, then if you want to have your own opinion about this team, cool. But at least I know every single day that, you know, we step on stage, I can look to my left and I can look to my right. And I know that like, I got a good group of guys around me and that's all you can ask for in this league. Nice greens read anything or you cool? No, nah, like I said, I'm just excited. I'm ready to hoop to be honest. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. I got a little taste of how it is to play with Greens last night again. And, um, you know, it, I thought we did pretty good. It was my first time on the court together. So I'm just, I'm super excited to, to continue and, and see how we can grow together.
Man, if only y'all can play earlier, man. <laughs> oh, you just too old, Kurt. Nah, man. Hey, man. Hey, sleep I is seen important. Kurt, I seen Kurt in that. I seen Kurt in that rec stream missing free throws. Nah. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's crazy. You ain't missing like Grange was just. He was missing anyway. <laughs> No, this workout grind, man. I gotta have all my sleep, bro. <laughs> I don't know why you. Uh, he's saying he's hiding. How are you a lockdown hiding? I'm superstar three, bro. Leave me alone. Apparently, bro. <laughs> all right. See, I mean, it took the, till the end of the podcast, Kurt, for the guys to show off some of that uh, behind the scenes camaraderie. But we love to see it. We'll see plenty of it in this upcoming season. Appreciate everyone tuning in. And they, Steve had mentioned, or sorry, Reed had mentioned him and Green's playing uh, in the burn lobbies. You're, this is coming out, by the time this comes out, this is, it'll be Tuesday. So later tonight, Steve, you'll be on the 2K League broadcast. Check me on that if I'm, yes, if I'm sir. wrong. We'll, yeah, yep. we'll be on there with another so everyone... Ben's lobby. We might even have Green's make an appearance again after the haircut he gets. Um, but yeah, no, it should be fun. Mm-mm. Everyone. Everyone tune in to that. Uh, thank you for watching this episode. Thanks again for you know stopping by and just showing consistent support throughout the calendar year, just for let alone the, the 2K League season. If you aren't already, again, a reminder to follow us on across all socials at That's Gaming Crew to keep up to date with all the latest news. On behalf of everyone over at NetsGC, have a good one. We'll see you next time.